So just a quick little preview, I guess. Um, I recorded the following video thinking I was going to edit, and then I decided, what the heck? I do make-alongs. That's how I teach. So I may as well just do make-along videos. Is it long? Yes. Is it possible that I am breaking important rules and nobody will ever watch them to the end? Also yes. But for now, this is what I can do and actually get it done and uploaded. So I'm just going to go with it. Here's the materials list for what's coming up. And if you want to make the project, gather things up, give yourself some time, and have fun with it. Hello, it's Dawn Marie. I'm here in the studio at the Briarwood Imagiporium, being my usual impish self. I don't really feel like doing the upholstery project for a bedroom chair that I really need to get done and get out of the way in the studio. I just, it's, it's been a busy week um, prior to this, and I've got a busy week ahead. Mom's 85th birthday is next weekend, and we have company coming in from out of town. So there's going to be a whole lot of have-tos on the list of things to do this week. And so I just want to play. So I thought I'd record while I play. And I'm going to make something I've already made some of because I have all kinds of ideas for how I want to use these. And what they are. They are um, they're tuck-ins for journals, but they can be used in other ways. Um, I'm going to use one that's off camera right now as the base for a birthday card. Um, but that is one way you can use them because the backs of them are plain-ish and intended to be written on. So if you're putting them in a journal, these are you know potion bottles. And so I might write a metaphysical potion on the back, a spell, if you will, um, something like that in a journal. So I got this idea. Doing them as potion bottles was kind of my own thing. Um, but the overall idea I got from Natasha, whose channel is Treasure Books. And she does all kinds of fun things. And I love to use some of her projects as just kind of wind down in the evening projects. And there's a few others I love too, but she's the one that this came from. And what she was doing was um, mason jars. Now she had seen the mason jars done, cut out very perfectly, you know, to look exactly like mason, mason jars, but she wanted something a little wonkier. And hers don't look quite like this, but they do have this torn, wonky edge. Um, my labels and artwork bits are a bit different than what she was doing. But, you know, I too, you know, regular mason jars, a little too country for my my tastes. Um, I certainly I I live cottagecore. I grew up cottagecore, although okay, maybe not quite as pretty as cottagecore growing up, and I haven't quite perfected that uh, daily looking charming while sweating profusely in the garden kind of thing. But um, I can I use mason jars. Um, they're perfectly lovely on a shelf filled up with jam, but for this project, they weren't my jam. So these were the first things I did. Just sometimes I like to put on a YouTube video and just craft along with it, just to try something different, something that's not my style or something I haven't done before and get the feel. So that's how I did these, it was just kind of working along with her but using what I had and kind of putting my own spin on it. And I like these well enough and I will probably use them um, in studio displays. I do open my studio to the public so I may use them in studio displays with labels here for different things that are around the studio or 
as cards. I may use them as tucks in a larger journal, but these are big, like, let's see. Here's a piece of eight and a half by 11 paper. These are big. Now I do use a journal that's this size for my regular planner and for art journaling and things like that. But a lot of the junk journals and things I make are lucky if they are this big and they're usually a good bit shorter. So it still might fit, but it's pretty tight squeeze. So those are a bit large. Should I do those again? I would make them sm smaller. Excuse me, now I have hiccups. Um, so I did those and I did a couple. Then I was like, oh wait, spell bottles. Ooh, because I actually make physical um, potion bottles, spell bottles um, that are multimedia collage. It's not that there's liquid potion inside, but there are, um, there's usually some sand or glitter um, in the base and then things tucked into the bottle and then things decorated on the outside. So that wasn't a big stretch. One of these days I'll do a video and I'll come back here and go, oh, and the link is, yeah, wherever. <laughs> but for now, suffice it to say, I've done real bottles that look somewhat like this, this idea. Um, and so flattening them wasn't a huge, you know, leap of, in thought process. Not sure I have much thought process today. Anyway, ugh. I did these, really liked them, but again, they're quite large. So I decided to make some smaller ones. And I really quite like these. These just, they just make me happy. And so I wanted to share with you how to make them one of the things, you know, you can get all kinds of die cuts and cutouts. I use things from magazines and catalogs. This is probably a logo. It's out of an older, quite a bit older magazine. So quite possibly that business isn't in business anymore. Um, I'm not going to sell this to somebody. It's for my own use. You're pretty safe with that. A lot of my cutouts come from different magazines. Some of them come from catalogs. So, you know, be mindful of copyright when you're doing this. If you're doing things to sell or things to reproduce and sell, especially, um, you kind of go beyond the I'm recycling a magazine into I'm using someone else's art. So watch it there. But Let's get started. I could ramble forever, but I can talk while crafting. So let's do that. And you can make these much smaller if you want to. Um, something down around oh, three quarters of this size might be more perfect for tucking into the smaller art journals, but this will do pretty well. Some of my art journals are only about yay high though. So I think I do need to make some shorter ones. Maybe I'll try that today. That'd be a good idea. So I'm gonna set these to the side. You don't need much for materials for this. Um, the backing is Manila and Manila file folders. And if you don't happen to have a big old box of them, that you own for other reasons and you don't want to invest in a big old box but you don't want to pay premium price this is one of those um, dollar store whatever dollar tree dollar rama dollar whatever you've got in your area that's a great place to get them they come in a package of whatever three or four for a dollar 29 or 25 or whatever your particular store is selling them for anymore um, paper scissors. So you can get them cheaply if you don't just happen to have a stash. Also, this is a great place to recycle older file folders where you've used them for a while and the tab is grungy and you've stuck enough stickers on there and you just want to go 
with fresh folders for whatever you're clearing files out. If the paper in the middle is still nice and, you know, has a nice texture that you, that you like, you can trim off any kind of tired edges and use that paper. So it doesn't even have to be new by any means. And the rest of the stuff in here really isn't new. I'm gonna set the mouse out of the way, hopefully without mucking up anything on the camera. Okay, um, the other thing that you'll want for the basic part of it is some sort of text. And you can use all sorts of things. Dictionary pages, quite often I like to use, but for this, I don't know, I wasn't feeling like those words have meaning. And so I don't always like, I don't wanna sit there and read the whole dictionary page to decide how I feel about what's on there. Um, and it just wasn't hitting me quite right for this. There's also this line down the center. And you'll see here on these first ones I did, this wasn't dictionary pages, it was a book of plays. And plays apparently are laid out in two columns rather than reading all the way across. They're put in two columns. And so you've got this line down the middle. And I don't hate it, but I don't love it for this situation. So I'm not gonna use the dictionary. And if we need to even discuss chopping up old books, um, you gotta go watch a bunch of other junk journalers videos so that you can get over any qualms you have about that. Um, Cause I'm not gonna go into it. Yes, I chop up books. So then I've got a Nancy Drew mystery. And those are pretty good pages for this kind of thing. Um, I was gonna say I used the Nancy Drew, but it was actually, um, there's a series, uh, of course we've all heard of the Hardy Boys, but what I've got is the Walton Boys, not to be confused with those other famous Waltons. Um, and that's what these came from. And I did like that the headings for the chapters were things like The Three Keys, Mysterious Diary. I thought that kind of suited the whole potion bottle idea. Gave a little mystery to it. Um, the only thing I didn't like about it is that names appear repeatedly because it's a novel. Um, it constantly has names in, in what, what's going on. So for today's, even though it'll have a lot of names, it won't be quite so much. I'm gonna use this art book, The World of Watteau. Um, some of the pages have very cool old images that I may want to use at other times, but there's also just a lot of pages that are just text. And it does have the name occasionally, but it's not like conversation where it's constantly George said, Bill said, Bob said. So I'm gonna use, actually that's a really prime page for something else because it's the center page. Uh, uh, okay, I'm gonna go forward one. Sometimes I need pages that are connected and that one was the center page of The, I just went blank. Center page of a signature. There we go. Signature is a chunk of book. So, hope you don't know that. All right, so there's that. I'm going to go ahead and just cut this off. Not because you would absolutely need to, but that way, if I decide I want this random sketch thing, oh, it's a kiss. He's there, he's dipping her. Okay, well, a wildly dancing couple. It looks like they're doing more than just dancing wildly. Don't know if you can see that clearly. It's hard to see, it's not real clear, it's just a sketch, but I think I'll save that for something rather passionate. And I've got this. So, you've got those two things. 
that's about all you need for starters. We'll talk about what the other stuff is. And then, yeah, I'm just gonna cut the extra white paper off so that I don't have to think about it in a minute. Is my garbage can close? No, did I set that under? No, no, that's across the room, that's okay. All right, so the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is you fold it in half. And you can fold it hard in half, but it made me happier to not put that hard crease in it. And I'm remembering that I vowed to do these a little shorter. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that beautiful W in half. There, okay, this ensures that I will do shorter. Um, impregnated with the imponderable aura of, okay, no idea. I guess, you know, good fancy words if you're going to talk about art. So you're going to fold it in half, but don't really fold it hard unless this is hard for you, in which case fold it hard. It probably won't matter to the final look. Um, and then I'm just going to tear some sort of bottle shape. And for this one, I'll kind of mimic this round. I kind of like that cute round perfumey apothecary potion bottle. You don't have to be too precise. You can cut them if you like things to look more precise, but honestly, that was part of what I really liked about this was that whole torn look. So there's my shape. I'm gonna switch it to this side. Um, I think I want the neck a little bit skinnier. So I can just fold it back in and eh, get in there and skinny it up a little bit. If you're coming to um, junk journaling and art journaling from a scrapbooking background, you might be wondering about, just shaping the top of this, you might be wondering about um, archival quality and aren't I worried about that? And my answer is no. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna narrow down this lip of the bottle as well. Okay, I'm happy with that. Cute little chubby thing. And I think I might just, since I've got this, I think I'll tear another one in a different shape. Okay, this I'll do kind of a little bit more that tall cylinder kind of bottle, like a beer bottle kind of shape or something. This may be narrower than I want. I, you know, for 20 some years, I was a mural painter. So making small things, it's a challenge. It's like, oh, but that's too small. Okay, now these things. Could I throw them away? Yes. Do I have plenty more book pages for any other project I might wanna do? Yes. But these things could be used for making other stuff. So I do have a box that I toss these into. At some point I will either use them or toss them. Um, but they can be torn up into bits and used for other things. In fact, see right here, these little doodles? You can do these little doodles on these little scrap pieces. And then you cut them out. And then you use them for things like bottle stoppers. So don't throw these things away yet. You might want them even for this project. And using different papers from different books and things will give you a different look. Um, these, I guess these are the Walton boys. Maybe this did come out of Nancy Drew. I'd have to look closer. Hidden Hills, whatever. But notice how the different, there's all different colors of paper and sizes of type and such. So 
I don't know, I think having a selection of different ones for different projects will be great. So I've got two of those. Before I glue them down to my background paper, I want to go ahead and ink the edges. You don't have to. Again, if the grungy look is not your jam, you don't have to ink your edges. Now, I do want to test something. I'm curious if I would like this. What color is this? Bamboo leaves. It's just sort of an olivey green. I'm curious if I would like that. So I'm going to give this a try on one of these scraps. Ugh. I've had my hands in all kinds of cleaning water earlier today. And... Hmm. Well, I'm not certain, but I kind of like the idea because I ink the edges again later. Once I glue, once I've glued it down and cut it out, I ink the edges again, and I'm wondering if I would like the look of doing this first bit with this mossy, it's more mossy green than olivey green, if I would like it that way, because that kind of says potion within. I'm going to go with that. Normally, I would just do brown on both. So if you don't love the look of this green, just do it, ink it in brown, and then when we do it again, ink it in brown again. And. If you do not have a fancy inking tool, which I have bought one, but I don't know where it is. I bought it while I was on vacation about a week ago, and I used it, but I don't know where I put it. And that's okay. Maybe I didn't. Maybe I, Oh, I bought some of the brushy kind. Um, you can make your own inking tools. Now, an inking tool isn't very expensive, but if you live in a small town like I do that doesn't have an art supply store to speak of, we have one. Um, it has a small selection of things, uh, lots of scrapbooking supplies, but not so much for mixed media. So they don't have everything. And they tend to have to, because they're a small business in a small town, they tend to have to, I think, buy maybe at just discounted retail prices and then mark it up for their shop, which, hey, it's great to have it available locally, but uh, it's pretty spendy. So champagne corks, um, my aunt gave me her whole collection of them and I had a bag of them already saved from things over the years. So champagne corks and I just used, and it's a, getting a little scruffy, I can give it a trim, um, because I happen to have bought furniture pads, those little things you stick on the bottom of chair legs. I happen to have bought a massive package of them because it was such a good deal to buy them in bulk and they do occasionally fall off of chairs. So I have a lifetime supply of those things. So if you happen to have extras of those around, you can just stick one onto a cork. Now I did add some um, kind of serious glue in between, like um, not an epoxy, not like a two-part epoxy, but something similar like a hardware store glue, because I found that just the stickiness on the back of the pad wasn't quite enough. But anyway, if you needed to, like if you're doing a class and you need to have a bunch of inkers so that everybody in the class has one, that might be a good way for you to um, supply everyone inexpensively. So I'm just going around and inking my edges. And I did do just a little bit, and I'll show you in a moment here. I did a little bit of shading with it. It probably doesn't make the least bit of difference in the long run. And I'm even I'm going in a little more than if I was typically inking the edge of something. Just to give it that roundness look. But on here, 
where I've got where you know you'd have that under under that round part all the way around you can use your inking tool to work that in and if you don't want to do it while holding it in your hand I don't really want to do it straight onto the table what was this note oh notes from skirt workshop uh, it won't hurt to ink the back of this you can lay it down and then ink in. I'm finding that this very fresh ink pad got a lot more ink on my inking tool than my old ink pads did. <laughs> I just bought new ink. I'm discovering that, wow, that really overdid it. Get that down. That's part of the reason. I was like jamming it in there, getting a lot of ink on there. Yeah, you don't have to do that on a brand new ink pad. <laughs> <laughs> Lesson learned. Okay. But this is kind of fun, just using this ink and tinting it up a little more than I did on the others. But yeah, I've got so much on there that it's actually putting lines on. Holy cannoli! Way more ink than I wanted. Okay, well learn from my mer 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 mistakes. <laughs> I'm not sure it's totally a mistake, but didn't realize it was going to do that. Okay, got way more ink in that pad than I really wanted to have. Okay. Just kind of using it to actually color the thing in a bit. Which is not how I did the other ones. I did not ink nearly as much. But I'm liking this green and I'm liking the idea of the potion bottle looking like it's got something in there. So, that's a bit inkier. You'll see on these, you know, I really did just do the edges. Ink as much as you want. Be aware, you do not need to jam that into your ink pad multiple times unless your ink pad is very old and is barely giving you any color. Yeah, it was time to go buy some new ink pads. Yeez. Okay, I really wanted to be able to just use the same one with some brown, which usually I can. Not sure how that's gonna go. We'll see. <laughs> We'll go ahead and glue these down. I won't color this one as much. Let's get this out of the way. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I pretty well soaked those class notes. That's all right. I can transfer those into the book where they were supposed to be anyway. All right. And so then I have this. Now I am going to grab a piece of scratch paper. I've been using this, but I'm going to go ahead and get um, parchment paper, which is behind me. I just put a bunch of it away. I use and reuse my parchment paper. I don't keep much of anything as fully disposable. It's my one little drop in the bucket to try not to not to be a glutton about the resources in the world and use them without thought. So there's that. Here's this. And my glue. And I do use Eileen's Tacky Glue for most of my art journaling. So you can use whatever glue you really like. A lot of people like to use glue stick because it doesn't wrinkle. My finding is that glue stick comes back apart. Um, you may have one you love that you've never had it do that to you, and if that's the case, wahoo. Um, but I've just never had great luck with it. And also, I will admit, I am glue stick challenged. By I can't get the thing stuck down before the glue has dried. I've had kindergartners practically rolling on the floor laughing at me because I just can't make it work. 
And then grab a card. This is not a credit card. It's one of those they send you in the mail. And this one was, you know, they actually sent an actual plastic card. Those are great for this. Um, do I use my own expired credit cards? Yes, not on camera. Um, in a pinch, if I don't have an old card and I need to spread some glue, will I use things out of my wallet? You bet. My library card I use very carefully. It's valuable. Um, but uh, there's enough, you know, store cards and things like that. And you'll notice when I do that, I'm smoothing it down with the card, but I also wipe it back off of there. And normally I would have a terry cloth rag very nearby. Oh yeah, that glue's grabbing that ink and smearing it out. That won't really matter, but just know that that can happen. This is fade resistant dye ink. If it were pigment ink, I believe that one would not have picked up on the water-based glue and smeared a bit. I used to know the difference between the two somewhere along the line. I've misplaced that information in the brain files. So I give it a pretty generous glop of glue and try to be sure you're not putting things down in glue that's on your previously used paper. Okay. And I do leave my glue laying on its side, with or without the cap. Depends on how dangerously I feel like living. I'll just put this one near it. I don't need to do much. You can spread the glue with your fingers. You can press it down with your fingers. You don't even have to have a card. I just prefer that method of gluing things down. So I'm going to set this aside. I can wipe that card off later. And then I am going to go ahead and use scissors to cut out the background. Save that paper to use for something else. You're very likely going to want to use it on the backs of stoppers because any proper potion bottle would have to have a stopper, right? And then I'm going to cut around, and of course my bottom is very straight there because I didn't tear it. But where I'm cutting around the edges, I'm going to go fairly smooth but I'll follow some of that, some of that tear shape. And this just, I don't know, I think it adds charm. It just gives it an outline of sorts. I mean, you could glue book paper down to cardstock of any sort, and you could certainly use cardstock of any sort on the back. I just like the color of manila folders. You could, you could glue it down first and tear through both layers once dry. Don't try to tear it while it's wet or you just end up with junky edges, but I like the look, the layered look of that. And this one, I really am liking that green potion. I've been out of the habit of recording for a while. Um, haven't been posting to YouTube at all, except for I think a studio tour, but I record classes and things um, for other things. But uh, a friend suggested just do five minutes. Just get back into the swing because I've been real resistant. Just do five minutes. So that was my idea today. I was going to come in and just do five minute video. <laughs> yeah, 
Let's give you the real Dawn Marie. When you watch my videos, you're going to get long videos. I'm going to make the thing. I'm going to talk about the thing. We're doing it in real time. I know that a lot of the pros say, edit it down. You don't want them too long. But I know a lot of the makers that I watch, I enjoy watching the whole process. Now, I might um, fast forward, you know, speed. What am I trying to say? You know speed up the, the video so it goes through some parts of it. But um, since I'm talking through the whole thing, it'll be awfully hard to decide just where I want to chop my words out. Okay, so I've got the basic bottle. Then what I need is some sort of label. There's kind of some basic elements that seem to make them special. Um, and they don't all have to have it but something in the center that represents a label and you can do like this was a picture of a mirror in a magazine that I cut out and I could write on that and probably will when I decide what it needs to be um, but you can also just use some sort of cut out imagery to do that and then you may want a neck band or a top band of some sort. I ended up not doing so many of those, you know, on these. Let's see, where are my bigger guys? Did I do them on there? That one, no, that one, no. Natasha was doing bands on hers a little bit more, like here on her mason jar ones. I didn't end up doing as many as I thought I would. I really liked the look of this at the top and this at the neck, in fact. So it kind of depends on what you come across. So you'll want something for a label. You'll want something for a stopper. And so I'm going to go after my labels first and then choose a stopper that makes sense with it. Bump. And since I'm going to be probably boring you terribly, I'll leave those where they can be seen. Because, um, oh, that's kind of cute. I don't know why I don't have a stopper in this one. I guess you just don't have to have a stopper, but that could work with it. So, those may come into play for stoppers. I am going to turn around and grab the cigar box of magical bits. Some things I know automatically I'm not going to use. Oh, coming towards, now we're just in spooky season, we're not into the Yuletide part, but there's a little Yuletide bit that could cut that top bit off and turn it sideways maybe uh, but there's word eh, eh. anyway it's an idea um, another bird one that's an old logo from my little studio shop I had years ago that might come into play That looks sort of magical, so that might be good. Sorry, did I pick out elements beforehand? No, I did not. Um, I'm not really a cat person, but I think this cat head could make a cool bottle stopper on one. Um, and this is from a Dover clip art book. There's a rabbit I stuck onto something else, thinking I think I was going to use it there, and then decided that was too many rabbits and roses. Well, now I like it. I don't know what I was thinking was the problem. I keep being drawn to these kind of oval shaped things and neutral, but when I put them on there, uh, on this, I guess I just really want some color. You know, here's a piece probably from a tile ad um, that could make an interesting neckband, probably on a larger bottle, like something that size. 
Actually, I kind of like it with that. I'll leave that out just in case I decide to do that. So these things are things I have fussy cut from various magazines. It's another one of those things to do when it's been a long day and you just don't know what else to do. Let's see, there's a bird I like. Starburst. I'm not too much into the mid-century mod thing, but uh, that'd be too much work to cut out. That one I thought looked like an eye. That's probably how I'll use these as in collages as parts of eyes. Mm, that has some potential. So yeah, sometimes I just cut them square like that. Sometimes I cut the whole thing out. And that's mostly magazine pages, but I will happily chop up old books too. A lot of things that are too big for this. I don't wanna to take too long figuring this out. I kind of want something that has a little bit of a label effect with the other elements being secondary. So I'm hoping I can find something pretty quickly. And if not, I can always, I have these little templates I've made for myself that I can just draw around them and cut out a piece out of any sort of paper. And that may be what I end up doing here. I just folded some paper into quarters and cut so that I got a symmetrical shape and made a pattern. But then I transferred it onto cereal box cardboard so that I have something more sturdy to draw around. I think I've got another one here. Yeah, I may end up just doing that in the interest of saving time because I'll end up coming back to this in a moment anyway for embellishments and other things. So how about that? Looking at these birds makes me think this morning I was out in the yard and we have a couple of families of quail, coveys of quail that have decided that they now live in our yard. And, you know, we're in town, we're not out of town. And I've seen them around the neighborhood off and on over the years, but um, not really in our yard. And for some reason this year, they've just decided they love it. It could be that I've left the weeds growing in strategically decent places for quail. Uh, you know, the upside to not being a very diligent gardener. But anyway, they were sitting up, all of them up in a lilac tree, scolding me. And there's at least a dozen. There's two groups, and both groups have at least a dozen apiece. Let me see about grabbing some scrapbook paper that's not too patterned. What have I got that I could cut? Something like that would work. I want something that's got a little something to it so I don't feel totally obligated. Oh wait, actually, I like the idea of something I see on this page. I like the idea of cutting out of some of this lined paper and even maybe keeping that number for one of them. Five, six, seven, nine seems very important. Okay, let's do that. Attraction, date. Eh. I pass on that. Ah! 
still. No wiggling. Be the label for that and this one this one I think needs a foofy label like a big one so work. am I going to cut right out the middle of something yes I am I will still use all of this for something else I promise, not much of anything ever gets thrown away in this place. I have the great fortune of having a generous studio space, and there's plenty of room to put more shelves up high on the walls, which I'm just about to get into as soon as Mom's birthday company has come and celebrated and gone. try to mostly cut that outline off. Yes, if I had done it in pencil, I could erase it. I do almost nothing in pencil. I'm beginning to like pencils, but I've had an almost lifelong aversion to them. Like just this weirdly particular thing about preferring ink pen and preferably black ink. And hanging out more with my dad, who was one of those guys who always had a pencil in his pocket, um, you know, in his shirt pocket. I've kind of had pencils creeping into my life over the last five years or so since I came back to my hometown to kind of help make, make things go easier for him. My mama has Alzheimer's. And uh, so helping dad kind of take care of her and life in general. Um, but since coming back and spending more time around him, I've gotten a little more in the habit of using pencils. But not today. Today I used my trusty black ink pen. The other thing that I've been liking lately is my colored ink pens. Not like markers or anything, but just like, you know, classic Bic ink pens, but in colors. I don't think that's been a thing for me since like junior high. But <laughs> I went through a thing this summer where everything had to be written in multiple colors of pink and purple and turquoise. <laughs> okay, I'm 12 again, apparently. All right, and then one of the reasons I didn't worry over much about cutting every little bit of that black off. So, set my little cardboard patterns. One of the reasons I didn't worry over much about getting that cut off is because I can perfectly well imagine wanting to just ink those edges in black. So now we'll see if, having gotten green all over this, I'm going to regret that. And see, this is a nice old ink pad where you have to actually smoosh it around a bit. And if you're not sure how you feel about that ink, like why do that? Let me show you. Okay. 
it's a subtle difference. But there's the without ink, there's the with ink. I just like that extra little layer of detail in there. You don't have to do it. You don't have to do a doggone thing. I hope, though, that while you're watching this, you went, well, I can do that while watching this video, and I hope you've gotten out some supplies and are at least tearing out some bottle shapes while you're watching me do this. That would be grand. You can see just a little bit of the green ink that's underneath the black coming through on here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Note to self. When buying new ink pads, you have to rehabituate to fresh. I think a lot of my ink pads came to me secondhand anyway. I used to teach an art journaling class uh, through the art center, the local art center for women in court order drug rehab. And there were oodles of supplies donated to me for that class. So that's where I think most of my ink pads came from <laughs> initially. They were already used. I didn't know what a fresh ink pad felt like, I guess. So there's that. And then as long as I'm inking things, I want to go back to the brown. Oh, back to the brown. I haven't used the brown yet. I may not have even opened this brown. Okay, this is a new ink pad. This is my old ink pad. I'm used to this one. I think in the interest of not mucking anything else up, I think I'll just stick with my old one. I don't need to get into the new one. It's slightly different brown, but close enough to the same thing. And I guess I'll smoosh off a little of that. You don't really have to, but just so I'm not putting a lot of black and green onto my ink pad. I'm going to go ahead and do the brown, kind of give it a sepia tone around the edges. And I'm not sure how this will go with having done the inner part in green, but I think it's going to be fun. Yeah, I'm liking it. There's not a huge difference, and you don't see that as much until it's against another piece of paper. And then that edge shows up. So this brown, yeah, some of that's shadow. Let's see if I can turn it so... It's not so shadowed. It just, it pops the edge out just that little bit more. Turn it upside down. You can see it there without the shadow. And if you're wanting to do something really dimensional, consider that, you know, remember, shadow. I could have done this just to one side if I was doing a page spread, say, that had a light source over here, like a candle or something, then maybe I wouldn't want to ink this edge. I'd only ink this back edge of it. But this, I don't know where it's going to go. And this is how I did them before. So that's how I'm going to keep going with them. I am going to do a little Halloween tree in my window. I'm going to put some um, mixed media paper doll, they're paper dolls with um, polymer clay faces. They're wicked pixies. I'm going to put some of those on it, and maybe I'll go ahead and hang some of these as ornaments on that. So kind of a kind of a spooky season tree, and it's not going to be an evergreen. Um, I've got to trim some dead branches out of some ancient lilacs. They were old when my parents bought the house. Hmm. Ooh, 50 years ago. <laughs> I just realized, wow, okay, it's been a full 50 now. They bought the house 50 years ago. The lilac trees were old then, and that was never my parents' focus, the landscaping kind of stuff. They were more focused on the vegetable garden and the fruit trees. So the lilac trees have not been very well tended. Not that Dad never um, did anything with them, but... He's, 
didn't prune them regularly and certainly in the last four or five years he just there's too many other things in life that take his attention so I got to get out there and cut out some dead branches and boy those things are magically gnarly and they're gonna make fabulous fabulous trees for my window display okay I'm kind of liking that. I think I'll put this label up high, almost like it's like hanging around the neck. Maybe I may add some little something, ribbon or chain or something to make it look like that label is hanging around the neck of the bottle. And oh, I have got <laughs> I've got a piece of tape that I pulled off, an old piece of tape I pulled off of my mat, and I keep sticking my elbow on the sticky bit. So, yeah, if I keep jerking my arm, it's because I keep sticking my elbow on that. Let's see. I need glue again. There it is. Okay. Bring my paper back. Stick these down. A lot of times I will figure out all my embellishments. Glue boogers. I'll figure out all my embellishments before I stick the labels on. Um, and today I'm just feeling like sticking the labels on first. But you can see, like on that one, I would be sad if that's what I ended up wanting to do and my label was already stuck down. So hopefully I'm not about to make myself sad. I'm pretty resilient. And I kind of like the idea of putting it slightly off center as if the bottle is slightly turned. You don't have to do that. It's just just a thing I like. And on this one I won't because I am going to make it look like it's hanging around the neck of that bottle. might have liked that tilted, but I already had it sitting down before I thought of that, so it will not be tilted. It might have been a charming thing. Think about that. Sometimes wonky looks better than straight and aligned. And then, I need some embellishments. I don't absolutely have to have them. You know what? I think I'll do my stoppers first. And then I'll come back to embellishments. Maybe. Maybe. Let's see. Wait a sec. I've got these out. Where was this thing was looking kind of cool? Do I still like the look of that? Now that I have a label on there, I'm not sure that makes as much sense. Here, do I want it up here? Now see, if I'd put this on first, then the label could have gone on lower. Hmm. I'll have to keep this in mind for another bottle that I use that green ink on, because I think that could have looked pretty impressive and then do something below. It could possibly still look good on there, but I don't think so. And I have this little cutout bird. Kind of like that. might like that over here. It has just the tiniest bit of reddish that kind of coordinates with that. Or maybe it sits up here. Um, I definitely need to do the stoppers first. I'll do the stoppers and I'll come back to that and figure out what I want for embellishments. So on these I've got a cutout of a bird. Um, butterfly that probably came from um, a catalog. I think it was a rug in a catalog, but you can get all kinds of die cuts of butterflies. No, no end to those. Um, I also have these things. These are just little bits that I doodle and cut out. 
have used that one and that. I kind of like that idea. Now I'm getting back to a little bit. This is kind of going a different direction than I was thinking, where it's a little bit more bright and almost more kind of 70s vintage rather than witchy vintage. This I thought I'd like, but now I've got a green bottle. I don't really necessarily want. Okay, could have a stopper that goes in this way. Kind of like that. Could have a whole big leafy stopper. I don't hate that idea. Don't like it in that one. Kind of like it okay in that one. So, I'll think about that. That's a possibility. That's a possibility. Okay, so there's a few thoughts. I'll pull this box back in. Fingers are all kind of gluey on the surface, and then they're also a little bit dry. It's a little hard to grab things because I was, some of those might work. I was doing a lot of shower cleaning and things like that at home this morning before I came to the studio. And even though I put lotion, you know, I used rubber gloves and I put lotion on afterwards, there's still something it does to one's hands and just end up with dry fingertips for the rest of the day. Hate that feeling. Of course, ever since COVID, we've learned not to lick our fingers in order to, you know, flip pages and stuff. So now it's like, now what do I do? Well, that could look good. That could make a good stopper. I like that idea a lot. I think I'll just go with that. I'll do one with some of my own stuff. There is that. Uh, it's very fancy, but I'll save it for a different thing. Um, I'll just mention, that's like a cutout of a necklace from a magazine ad. Jewelry pictures oftentimes cut out, make interesting embellishments. And here's another one, um, buttons, also, um, drawer pulls, doorknobs, um, so hardware kind of catalogs or home improvement magazines will have oftentimes cabinet hardware that make really great embellishment things. And this isn't exactly right for any of what I'm doing here, but I just wanted to mention that buttons and drawer pulls and things like that. Ooh, I do have a frog. Okay, that's a possibility too. Enough possibilities. Now I have to decide some things. I really think I'm using this bird and it's easier to cut out things like this. It's better to glue the whole piece down, trim the bottom if it needs to be so that you can figure out how it's gonna sit on your bottle because you need some extra length on your stopper coming out from underneath. Let's see. I think, let's see, da, 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 da. I'm going to make that bird maybe standing on something else. That's not the right something else. Oh, it can. Can it tip and look right? Or does it look like I've tipped the picture? Let's see. Now see, this is why I do not make a lot of stuff to sell. I am not good at production art because I have to think through all of these things. 
I think if I do it at that angle, just give myself a little snip here so that I know. That'll help me figure it out later. And then I'll just cut loosely around it. Okay. So I'm going to glue this down. I'm not going to glue it right down at the edge because I want some of this length below it. I have to remember that, turn this, let's see, that's the straight up and down. So I only angled it slightly. Okay. go in there. Okay, fine. I'll get a pencil with this. I do own pencils. Okay. That just tells me about how much I want and I'll cut a little inside of that. That way there's something to glue on behind. straight up that and again cutting a little off oftentimes I won't cut out right away when I first glued something down if I am being properly careful but that's a big if Like many of your favorite YouTubers, oftentimes I just want to do the thing. And so I wing it. Or at least like many of my favorite YouTubers. I assume you watch some of the same people I do. You could leave me a comment. Tell me who you love to watch. Um, I love to watch... Bernadette Banner and Kathy Hay for historical costuming. Um, uh, Marame Fine Art. Is that what she calls it? Marame? That's not right. Marame something. Um, she does art journaling. Maybe it is. Marame Small Art. That's what it is. Marame Small Art. She has a couple of channels. Um, Natasha from Treasure Books, um, Kelly from Book and Paper Arts. I get fun ideas from her. Let's see. Being very much a liberal, I enjoy Trey Crowder, liberal redneck. He cracks me up. Who else do I watch? Did I say Rachel Maxey? If I, I didn't say Rachel Maxey, I watch Rachel Maxey. Rachel amuses the heck out of me. She will just dive in and do, whether she knows how to do a thing or not. And in the end, her projects always look, if not amazing, they look as good as they need to for what the purpose is. There are times that I think, oh honey, wish you knew X, Y, or Z, but 
she's barely 30 and I'm not that far short of 60 so you know I've had a few years to muck things up and figure them out okay so that's gonna go up to there I'm gonna shorten this and just kind of cut in the shape of this doesn't matter too much it's on the back but the back is intended to be a journaling spot or a place to write a note if you're using this as a greeting card so you want it to look you know intentionally shaped so that's not perfect that's not too bad I'm good with that okay now I'm kind of liking that but now I think Maybe it needs something else. Does it need? No, it doesn't. That's not helping it any. Like that just fights it. Does it need a blue flower behind it? No, stop it. Leave it alone. It doesn't need a frog. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and give this some glue. And I know from that spot down it needs to have glue on it. And here we go, getting my finger in the glue, even though I do not have a glue rag sitting on the table. It's okay, I'm wearing paint jeans today. <laughs> you know, life is easier if you just wear play clothes all the time. Because then you never have to go, oh, well, I'll need to go change my clothes before you do something. And then you never get around to doing the fun thing because uh, if you have to go change clothes, and now I'm tipping this again because like, I want more of this wood bit showing. So now I'm going to tip it, even though I cut it to fit on the back. And then I'll leave that canted out like that, but I think I'll just curve that edge. So it's kind of like it's on a cork. And I didn't cut this out. I could take an X-Acto and knife this out very carefully, but that's going to leave some really fragile spots there. So I think I'll just leave that alone. That way it can be handled and I don't have to worry that it's going to get mucked up. And you'll see this is curving right now. I'll put it in a book overnight to go flat. All of these were put in books overnight. They're not perfectly flat. It doesn't bother me, you know. I I like paper. I like when it's glued and it's a little bit wonky. I like overstuffed journals. Um, I didn't used to like that look. It's like something I've grown into or relaxed into maybe is the right word. So there's that. I think it needs a little something. I don't like the bright white of that against it, and yeah, it's got a bird already. Maybe this goes down here. Nope. This is gonna be I was gonna say I think this is gonna be too kind of 70s or something, but that's kind of cute. Hi, down low. Does it bother me if the words on this go upside down? Yep, I like it just like that. That will be the embellishment. <laughs> I just read this on the back. I remember the language in Nancy Drew. Hypers, Nancy! I'd have thought. <laughs> Nobody says hypers or jeepers. Classic Nancy Drew, which I think rolled over into a lot of the language used on Scooby-Doo cartoons. I think came straight out of Nancy Drew type books. I think the writers played on that. Okay, that makes me happy. And then I can fill in the label later. So I'll add this to my collection of potion jars. And then this one, let's see. Do I want a round 
stopper with a frog on it. Do I want the frog down here on the bottle? Hmm. Frog's just a little bigger than what I want. I want flowers. Hmm, I kind of like that. Didn't think I would. I was thinking, ah, uh, too floofy and girly and whatever, but I like the flowers and I like it that way so that that tucks into the corner. I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then I can figure out what I'm doing for the topper. So I hope you will make some of these. I hope I will get a video out soon that shows them in action. And by the time you're seeing this, perhaps that video will be out and you're seeing this because I sent you back to this, on, you know, how to make this particular element. But if you've enjoyed this, do please hit a like on it and feel free to subscribe. I upload who knows how often <laughs> because honestly at the time of filming this I have one video out there that I pretty much just did because friends from back in the Midwest wanted to see what my studio looks like. And if I didn't have glue on the edge of this, but I wanted to get glue underneath, I might put glue on a piece of cardstock, on the edge of a piece of cardstock, and use that to sneak the glue under the edge. In case you don't already know that trick. Okay, so there's that. And it needs a stopper. Mm. Mm. Do I want another bird stopper? I do. Look at that. That'll look good. Okay. some width to that and then trim off some excess. Oh, I probably shouldn't have just whacked into it because I could have gotten away with doing like a round stopper and not cutting, fussy cutting the bird out. But now I think I've made it so I kind of have to fussy cut. That's all right. I think on this one I'll kind of fussy cut the bird and but I will then glue it onto a different background. So I'm going to loose fussy cut. I don't know what the word for this is. I just call it loose fussy cutting where, yes, you're cutting around the piece, but you're leaving a border. And part of that is because it's a little hard to tell. This bird is sitting in some leaves. It's a little hard to tell quite where it ends. Okay, so I've got that. And I think I will just create a round stopper about the size of this frog maybe. Just using this to check size. And yeah, cut a circle just a little bit bigger than that. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That does get kind of bulky. Fine, it'll just be loosely fuzzy cut. Glue it to a piece of manila folder and get this project done. Thank you to my friend Renee, who said I should sit down and just film five minutes of something. Like she would have had me just film introducing the materials. <laughs> or if I was, I was going to film the Wicked Pixies thing, but I didn't feel like setting up polymer clay today and getting that all ready. Um, she was like, just film starting the faces like the thing you do first 
and that was very good advice. It got me to sit down and turn the camera on. <laughs> I didn't stop at five minutes. I'm not sure I know how to film five minutes of video. And again, this piece is going to be seen from behind on the back side of the card, so I just gave it a vaguely interesting shape. Now one of the things I'm doing, especially since I'm cutting wet, I did cut up to there and then I stopped and cut across and that's so that I can cut in from this direction and that's almost always the better idea anyway rather than trying to turn your scissors but right now that paper is wet from that glue in there and I probably would have just kind of mushed the edges half torn and half cut if I tried to cut back out from there and then I'll trim that a little better not sure what its tail was supposed to look like. It just sort of disappeared off to the shadow. I think it's a little short, but it might be a short-tailed bird or it might be sitting at such an angle you wouldn't have seen it. Don't know. I don't think anybody else is ever going to look close enough to know. And if they did, I don't think they'd care. I am going to use black ink. And if you, another thing you can do quite often just go in and tap your edges. You can take a Sharpie and go around your edges or any other marker if you want to. Seems to have done pretty well. I'll get a little more. I just want to kind of knock off the manila folder that's seen from the side. There. So this is just one of those relaxing little fun projects to make that doesn't take too much brain power. I don't have to psych myself up to be enthusiastic about doing it. stopper there and I'm not loving that so I'm, before it sticks I'm going to pull back for a moment I want a little something hmm this might be a place for a snippet of ribbon like I used on the original um mason jars that Natasha was doing. She was using bits of ribbon, and I think I might grab just a snippet of something. Let's see what's handy. stick velvet ribbon on these things but for some reason I'm looking at that going that is just the thing I don't know why so if that's there this needs to be oh I know why because I wanted to add some thickness that's what was going on in my head adding some thickness and not sticking that so far down behind boy that doesn't give me much attachment room not sure if that's a grand idea. Yeah. 
And we'll cut a snip and see what happens. I don't love it. It's not a big deal. Yeah. I just, see, it's just one of those silly realism things. This must be a cork stopper that the bird is sitting atop of. And so therefore it has to have a certain amount of thickness to make me happy. <laughs> I'm not sure that really does it. Oh, booger pickers. What do I want to do? Oh, wait. I have these funny little crowns over here. Would one of these underneath, as if the bird is sitting in a crown? It's a little weird, but it's kind of fun. I don't absolutely hate it. It's not perfect. Let's just go with that. Will it have the reinforcement of the manila folder? No, but I'm gonna let it fly. It's a bird, I'm gonna let it fly. Ah, it was funny, by accident. Okay, it's a bird on a crown. That must mean something. All right, so when I'm getting all symbolic with the potions, that gives me another element to play with. And that kind of, you know, now they're sort of a match set because they both have one of those sketchy elements. They both have a bird on top. Did I intentionally do that? No, that's just what happened. I'm gonna leave them at that. I hope if you try this, you have a lot of fun with it and I will do my best to record more things and post more often. We'll see how that goes. Hopefully, I'll see you again soon. Have a good one. Go make stuff. Mousing over, over, where's the mouse? There's the mouse.